selling houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinto, where I teach you how to start flipping and old selling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So I got a question, I didn't really understand it, so I'm gonna try and answer the various ways it might, of what was meant. I am in El Paso, Texas today, on my way to an appointment. So, the question was, how does my attorney get the contract? And I don't know exactly what that means, so I'm gonna explain how the process works. So, a couple of things. If the question is, how does my attorney know which cro- Oh, and, and I think the question also asks, can you show me an example of a contract? So if the question is like, well, what attorney, sh- what contract should my attorney be using? I will say to you in the strongest terms possible, if your attorney doesn't know what contract to use, you need a, be- a de- better attorney. That's number one. Number two is you as the buyer in a transaction with the seller, the after you agree on a price, the seller's attorney generates the contract and nine times out of 10 is gonna email it to your attorney, right? Email, this is a separate thing that says email correspondence is fine. Occasionally they'll overnight it if they're really old school. I mean, it's so stupid, but, um, but um, nine times out of 10, they are going to email it to your attorney. Now, again, I don't know what the, what the question was exactly because there was clarification about what contract they should use. There's a standard contract in New York. Now, I don't care if you use a standard contract. There are people who've rewritten the standard contract into different contracts, it's fine. Um, but the standard contract in New York is used you know, most of the time. Um, and if you're, But if your attorney has any doubts whatsoever of what type of contract to use, then I would say you got the wrong attorney and you should jettison that attorney into space as soon as humanly possible because your attorney should be very, very familiar with what contract to use and exactly how they're going to get it. Um, now, just to reiterate and to be clear, because some people don't understand this, you will not bring a contract to a seller meeting. You should not, definitely will not, well, I guess they will not, you do whatever you want, do not bring a contract to a seller meeting because, what are I, I think 375 North, because it is something generated by, by an attorney. Now, if the guy says, listen, I'm not using attorneys, even in that case, your attorney should be sending him the contract um, because at least you should be protected legally and you should make sure, really sure, that if you're closing without an attorney, and I've done it a couple of times because the seller just refused, that they sign a very, very strongly worded affidavit from your attorney explaining that they choose not to be represented and that they're not being coerced and whatever because you do not want the chance that somebody comes back later and says you screwed them over. Now. Listen, obviously these transactions occur all the time. And in 49 states, um, you know, that risk, I guess, still exists that someone could say, you screwed me over. But in New York, where it is customary to use an attorney, if someone would sue you and they didn't use an attorney and you didn't have the protections that I just described, so this very strongly worded affidavit that said, yes, I know I could be represented and I choose not to be, then you can lose, right? Because it's not what's typically done. And that's just the way it is in New York. So do not skimp on that, ever, ever. You must, must, must either use it, either have the seller represented or have a your attorney draw up I don't know where I'm going now, a very strongly worded affidavit that says that they agree not to be represented. I'm going to 38. Okay, so um, that's the gist of it. I mean, if you want me to show you a copy of the contract, I can, but like, you can literally Google it and see what a standard real estate contract in New York is. It's a horribly worded document for a buyer because clause 26 says no assignability. Um, it's a, it's a very, very, very strong contract in New York. So I say this all the time. It's very hard to get into contract, but it's almost impossible to get out of contract. So, you know, a lot of people choose to double close if you're making so, more than a certain amount of money in a lot of states because they're afraid that either the seller's going to walk or the buyer's going to walk or they're both going to walk. But in New York, the contract is so ironclad strong. Nobody's getting out of contract unless the other side lets them out. That's just the way it is. So it's a very lengthy pain in the ass contract. And the truth is... Any rider that's added to it, and almost every contract is a rider, supersedes the contract. So you can pretty much stay the standard contract and just put whatever you want in the rider that supersedes it. But um, I don't feel like sending a copy of the contract out. If you need it, I can send it to you, but it's really something you can Google. Um, But do not in any way, shape, or form even imagine yourself bringing a contract to a seller appointment, seller agreeing to price, and you go, here, sign this. That is not a smart way to do it. Now, some people do it that way. I know there are people that do it that way, but I, I, it's not so simple. 
right? There's a lot of issues there with uh, seller representation. And you want to be represented too, right? Because guess what? If everything goes right, no one cares, right? You don't need attorneys, you don't need anything. Well, when things go bad, you need an attorney. And it's important to understand that uh, if you want to get out of a contract, you better have some way to get out. So be careful. Uh, what else we got? I think that's it. So I'm calling it short as I drive to meet someone in El Paso. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope I answered your question. I, would, I didn't really understand the question because it could have it could have meant a lot of different things. Um, but if you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or ha learn to flip and wholesale.com. What else? If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really, really, really have been getting me a lot more views, so please keep liking my videos. I really appreciate you doing it, whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're seeing it. Um, and please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week, and I almost never know what the hell to talk about, so your questions give me uh, topics to discuss. So food for thought, something I think about something you said, and I'll talk about it the next day, um, and maybe I'll answer the question on the first day. So uh, you can ask anything. It does not have to be about the video, about the video you're watching. And if it's something simple, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something that I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video on it. And if it's something that either I've never covered or I haven't covered in a long time, I will do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.